Kutzer, however, is a Guillermo del Toro film that reminds me of how excited I was when I first saw Pan's Labyrinth. I know that not everyone loves it as much as I do. I mean, it was awards fated and all the rest of it. But some people have said, oh, well, it's not del Toro's best work. And I agree that Pan's Labyrinth is still the very, very high watermark. But I loved Shape of Water because it was sensitive and funny and beautiful and heartfelt. It had that fantastic central performance by Sally Hawkins, a brilliant kind of cross of the creature from the Black Lagoon and Splash, and that wonderful musical sequence. I mean, for me, it was everything I want from a mainstream Guillermo del Toro film, that incidentally, a mainstream film in which somebody falls in love with a fish. I want to ask you what part of the country you come from. I originate from Canada. I guess where that is. Well, I know where Canada is. I've been there myself. Well, travel for a slave. On to number nine, and at number nine, Steve McQueen's 12 Years a Slave. I remember seeing 12 Years a Slave, and I made a piece about it for the Culture Show on BBC Two, and just being overwhelmed by how powerful it was, how passionate it was, how strong it was. The first time I saw it, there were, there were certain moments in it when I really recoiled from the screen, but the second time round, it's the beauty of the film, the unexpected beauty of the film, some of those musical sequences that really, really get under your skin. There's so much in that movie. It's such an important film historically in terms of its place in cinema history, but also because it's a really powerful story, really powerfully told. At number nine, 12 Years a Slave. Now, at number eight, it's a full-blooded horror movie. Now, I know you could say that, you know, Shape of Water was influenced by horror movies because of Creature from the Black Lagoon, but Number eight is a proper, scary, thoughtful, intellectual, frightening movie, which I love to pieces, Jennifer Kent's The Babadook. First time I saw The Babadook, I thought it was a really great kind of creepy story. But the more you watch it, the more you realise just how well it all ties up psychologically. It's heartbreaking. It's a story told from a mother's perspective. And in fact, in many ways, maybe it's all playing out in the mother's mind. It's such a sharp film. And again, bears repeated viewing. Love The Babadook. On to number seven, and it's another horror inflected film. This one from Babak Andri. And I went to see this completely without knowing anything about it at all, Under the Shadow. Now, in many ways, Under the Shadow is a similar film to Babadook. I kind of compared them when I reviewed them when it first came out. The thing that I love about Under the Shadow is that it's a story which on the one hand has these supernatural elements, but it's absolutely grounded in reality. It manages to mix the personal and the political, stuff that's down to earth and stuff that's otherworldly. It has moments in it which are really shiversome, you know, the real kind of feeling of the cold hand on the back of your neck. But again, it's made with real heart. And it's a story with a real psychological underpinning. Again, I was surprised by it. I didn't know anything about it before I saw it other than the title. And then I just loved it. And we need to talk about Kevin is a very, very sharp adaptation of a book that it's very difficult to adapt. Once again, there are many different ways in which you can interpret the story. I mean, Tilda Swinton's central character is so overwhelming that you do get the sense, as you do in the book, that what you're seeing is something seen through the perspective of a certain character. It's a very difficult subject matter. It's a very dark subject matter, but Lynn Ramsey handles it perfectly. It's never exploitative but it's infinitely intriguing. Dealing with tragedy and, you know, really, really difficult stuff, but doing it in a way that's cinematic and understandable. Nowadays, they teach, we need to talk about Kevin in schools. If people are studying film studies, it's one of the films that they study. Why? Well, because you can look at it over and over again and always see something different. I love Lynn Ramsey. I think all of her films have been absolutely thrilling. But we need to talk about Kevin is the top of the path for me.